Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker and welcome to August, July bingo. I did actually get a bingo. I did actually get a whole row done this time. So I am filming this early. I am going to mark one other thing as having been done because I know that's what I'm doing tonight. And that's this square here. That will be my dad's Christmas blanket. Um, if you've been with me for, for the last year, you know, last year, um, for my first vlogiversary, I actually had started a corner to corner blanket for my mother for Christmas last year. And this year it'll be my dad's turn to get a blanket. So that one will be marked by the end of the day today, but it is oh dark 30 in the morning right now. We're in the middle of a thunderstorm. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and film this while I had makeup on and had time to film. If you saw my show and tell 77 that I filmed right before this, uh, you'll already know I'm trying to rush through everything. I've got an appointment to get my car wheel change done. Um, not quite time for me to do my inspection. Unfortunately, I have, I have three more months before I can do my inspection, but it happens. So as I normally do, I'm just going to go straight across each row and tell you guys what I got done, what the project was. If I've got it here, I will share it. I think I have everything. So row number one, finish a whip. I did my purple Just Feel Festive shawl. If you uh, need a link to any of these, check my last few show and tells if you want the pattern. I don't normally link patterns in my yarn bingo videos. It's a... Uh, it's just too much for me to do before I get a video uploaded. So if you're interested, please go check out. I think it's the last four videos. I am trying to keep my videos under 30 minutes, but you can just check the description box and they'll be there. The next one I had was share an unexpected Christmas gift that can be quickly made. Um, so what I shared in the group was actually not so much a gift you make, but something you pull together to somebody who's craftily inclined, uh, a starter kit. And not just, you know, a book and some supplies, but also, you know, give them a list of YouTube channels that have good tutorials. Um, some of the unexpected things that you wish you had had early starting out, um, you can include, you know, like a stitchinary or something like that. But this works not just for yarny crafts. This works for embroidery. It works for quilting. There are so many small projects you can pull together to like a pillowcase to help somebody learn how to quilt. And then, you, you know, you, you give them a rotary cutter, um, the small quilting ruler, because that's all they're going to need for that first project. Um, you know, maybe a thimble if they're planning, if you're planning on helping them learn how to hand quilt instead of machine quilt. Uh, you know, little things like that where you're introducing them not just to the craft with supplies and some written directions, but also giving them the video tutorials that now exist on YouTube. Um, you could purchase, you know, something like um, there's Creative Bug. Uh, Creative Live. Craftsy is getting ready to come back. I don't know. I can't say send them to Craftsy, but you know, you can purchase them, you know, a three month subscription so they can get access to all the videos up front. That was my, my idea for a quick gift. Blank is in, blanket in progress. So I am working on my granny scrap blanket. These are my squares from this last week. My show and tell, um, 78 will show you the progress I've made. I've actually got quite a few squares put together too, but I final like border piecing the strips together. Row two, create an item for yourself. Well, this was created for me. I may or may not be keeping it. So this was originally supposed to be a poncho. It was the Uptown Poncho. And in my Last show and tell, I was talking about this, and the fabric is just too dense to make it work. I mean, you can see how stiff the fabric is, and even if I hard blocked this, I think it's going to separate the stitches too much. Um, on camera, you can't tell that this isn't a herringbone stitch really well because of the denim texture to the yarn. 
but I don't want to lose it because in person you can see the herringbone. So I turn this into a shawl. This will be a shawl, but I don't know that I need another shawl. So I did intend this to be mine, but I might end up gifting it or donating it. I'm not sure yet. I you know sometimes it just doesn't work out for you. I actually find I, one of the ones from last month was share a project you made for somebody else, but ended up keeping for yourself because you just fell in love. I actually have the reverse problem. I tend to make things for myself and end up gifting them and donating them because either they don't fit right or do I really need another dot, dot, dot. Um, finish a whip hidden crosses cowl. This is a fairly new pattern release. I believe this was in show and tell 76 is when I showed this. The texture isn't showing off as awesome as it is, but these are some cross stitches here. We have some bobble stitches. There's some ridge details. It's a beautiful textured scarf. This would be gorgeous in a whole palette of neutrals. Ooh, sorry. Got hair stuck in my lip. Ah, it's attractive. Row three, create a hat, no name beanie purple. I'm doing better at like marking exactly what these are supposed to be. After it's only taken me, you know, a year, almost a year and a half. But yeah, there we go. It's a no name beanie. That's uh, Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheters pattern. She's got a video tutorial. Finish a whip purple scarf. I just shared this in show and tell 77. This is a ripple scarf using one ball of Lion Brand ice cream and grape. Free space. Next row, make an item for a long distance friend or family member so it's ready to mail for Christmas. I think this is going to be a Christmas gift. So this is the cranberry cream cowl hat from Expression Fiber Arts. You really can't see the bobble detail in it at all through here, but there is some bobble detailing. It's got a hole for a drawstring here, but I, I am not sure if I'm actually going to use that or not because the person I'm thinking about sending this to probably will not wear it as a hat. But I do actually like the way the color stacked up because when it's scrunched down on your neck, it just looks like a whole bunch of watercolor gloriousness. So this will actually be blocked, um, not firmly, but I do want to stretch the stitches wide just a little bit and ensure that the ribbing, y'all can see that that's flipping up and down. I just want to ensure that that's going to lay flat needs to go there. Um, make something for an essential worker, cashier, mail carrier, etc., etc., etc. And that is, that's what I was going to do with this. I actually have somebody to give this to. I forgot to write down their name, but I actually made this to, yeah. <laughs> I just shared this in my show and tell, like, for me, five seconds ago, for you a couple days ago, but um, yeah, I actually made that for, for a gift. Now, if I remember to actually gift it, that'll be, that is part of my problem recently. So my next one is finish a whip. This is the one cake shawl. And just, you know, this is part of, um, showing you the difference in how stitches matter when you use these yarns. So this looks like a staggered striping pattern. And here, once again, you can just see kind of the watercolor glory. This will actually probably end up being gifted as somebody, actually a friend of mine that just had a birthday was talking about how much she loved the colors in it. And I might actually gift this to her. We're seeing her for dinner this week. So unfortunately I have, was not feeling better to see them on Saturday, but fortunately that may mean I can gift her this instead. <clears throat> uh, 
share a YouTuber who has under a thousand subscribers. So I will link this link down below if I remember, but I shared Sunny, the North Country knitter on the group. She is absolutely fantastic. She is absolutely precious. Um, she is a knitter. She is not a crocheter. Um, but I find watching, now I, I do do both, but I've always found watching both crafts to be informative because you start to understand fibers, colors, and how they work. Um, if you're a Tunisian crocheter, there's a lot of crossover in how things are going to look as you work them with knitters. Um, if you're a straight crocheter, a lot of times you might see tips and tricks for tools from knitters. Um, that's part of that. I've mentioned before, there is some kind of snobbery going on in the knitting community, and it can be a little intimidating to start watching those things because you feel like things aren't good enough. But the truth is, is there are tools that are used for both crafts that can be very beneficial for you as a crocheter as well. Knitting wires is something I, or blocking wires is something I had never heard of until I discovered more knitting content. And then that really helps speed up you know, pinning out projects to block them and stuff like that. So weird things like that, you know, definitely watch crossover information if you've got time. Make a suggestion for September's bingo card. I suggested um, something fall or Halloween themed. Share a cowl for September. I shared Ricola. I think it's Crochet and Stuff. Is her new channel name? I shared her... Uh, Halloween Mal, Finished Whip Ice Cream Shawl. So this is my basic increase shawl. I shared it, um, I showed it as in progress knitting in uh, my, one of my knitting for crocheter videos recently. So there's that. Um, make something different that you don't think others would think to make. So in and of this, in and of itself, this project is not unusual. However, how I did it is, well, fiber content. So you guys, if you've been with me for any length of time, know I love scrappy projects. I love Using, I love trying to use my scraps up as I go so I don't end up with totes and totes and totes and totes of just random balls of yarn. Part of what I've been doing recently is making those granny squares I shared. But in my worst of weight scrap bin, I had a lot of roving style yarn as well. I love roving style yarns, whether they be acrylics, wools, blends. They're beautiful. They're soft. They're drapey. They can be pillow light to wear around like um, a scarf or a cowl or a shawl, depending on the fiber content. You know, if it's wool blend, um, you're going to have it breathe a little bit more. It's not going to feel weighty on the body. And a lot of times those yarns don't add bulk to your body when you wear them. So if you're fluffy or gal, bulk is something you don't want, uh, especially, you know, at your caboose, if you're wearing a shawl, um, sometimes you don't want to stack any more here because a lot of us don't have a whole lot of room at the collar line. So what I did is I took those and I started, this was originally a scrappy project starting at which corner? This corner. So all the way through here, this is a truly scrap project. But I didn't want to wait on continuing it. So what I did is I ended up taking yarns from my stash that were roving stalls where I only had one or two balls or yarns that felt like that. So I paired those with some Lime Brand Scarfy that I had in my stash, which is also what the dark end down here was. And I really loved how that looked because, you know, the the background color can be very dominant. You know, this was a blues, this was a pinks, this was a reds down here, but the black is very heavy throughout all of it. The only section without black is 
in my in my case it was only like an eighth of the walls but i took those held them double using a very large hook and made a scrap shawl and what's going to come along with this is i'm going to make basically big button cufflinks so i can button this down the arm button it down the front i can move them around kind of like a shawl pin and close this wrap on my body however I want to close it. So I'm pretty excited about that, but it is a little bit unusual, not that doing a big corner to corner shawl basically is unusual, but the plans with it to do the closures. And even if I want to wear it as a shawl, I can very easily drape one end up here and use a big um, wide post shawl pin to hold it in place. So that's my, the versatility of this rectangle is really what I was looking for because I really wanted, I really wanted that to be a poncho, but I didn't want to be locked into one shape. So you can do it where you meet the rectangle this way. I'll be able to meet it in short end to short end. I can, like I said, just wrap it and throw it over my shoulder. I can just wear it as a shawl. It's huge. It's, um, a little over six feet already. It's going to continue to stretch in length and width as I wear it because it is very, very heavy. It's 2,200 yards plus. So it's a, a very heavy garment overall, but yeah. So that's what I got done. So, and like I said, this one will be my dad's blanket that I'm starting later on today after I get back from my appointments and stuff. But I only got the one bingo. I came close once again. I'm missing this here. I'm missing this one here. Um, I'll be missing this one here. So I came close to more, but didn't quite make it. Like I said, I also only use these to inspire me for what my next project should be if I don't know what to do. I don't use these as a hard and fast, I must make kind of thing. Um... I've been on a bender of late of doing certain kinds of projects. So I really haven't uh, met up with a lot of the criteria that have been on there for what I've been trying to work on. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the fun of Yarn Bingo. It's seeing how your projects align. Um, I, I really wanted to do the pillow project, but I didn't. I've been trying to clear my desk of some of the whips that I've been working on for a while. So, and yarn that has been sitting there to be worked for a while, which is why, you know, like the, I pushed through the ice cream shawl and then did a scarf immediately afterwards with the leftovers. Um, I have, that's the last week and a half, I've really been focusing on these things that have been sitting on my desk or around my desk. I want to get those used so I can bring new things up to work on. <laughs> so. My projects haven't lined up necessarily with the card, but that's okay. You don't have to get a blackout. You don't have to get six bingos. This is inspiration and just kind of fun. Um, it shouldn't put pressure on you to, oh, I have to do this one thing. Oh, I've got to do this one thing. Uh, that's not what Yarn Bingo is about. So I will leave the Facebook group link down below. I'm not sure who is doing September's card. Um, Kayla has been feeling better, so she might, but uh, I believe they are not at their house this week because of the uh, hurricane and power outages and stuff. Um, so she may or may not be putting it up. Robin might be putting it up. Um, so I, I don't know what to tell you on that one, but definitely check out the Facebook group. Um, that's where the card has been posted for the last couple months. So... Take care, you guys. I love you, and I will see you guys real soon. Bye, guys.